Have you ever wondered if you're losing out some performance by having a second monitor connected to your gaming PC? I mean, it's a whole nother monitor that your graphics card has to render, and even if you aren't playing the game on it, it must have some effect, right? Well, I've got some graphics cards and a few monitors, and I thought I would test that out. Specifically, I'm testing with this, an RTX 3080 with 10 gigabytes of VRAM, a 1660 with 6 gigabytes of VRAM, and this tiny little, technically 1U passive 1050, with two gigabytes of VRAM. Now the reason that I'm listing both which graphics card it is and how much VRAM it has is important to the theory of why I think this may have a performance impact. See, rendering a standard monitor display without any games on it, just windows or playing videos for example, isn't overly difficult for your graphics card to do. Of course, really low end graphics cards and really high refresh rate monitors it will struggle a bit more, but for some context, the 2080i on my system, my, my main desk PC that I edit all these videos from, that takes over about 2 or 3% utilization while having two 1440p 165Hz displays connected and a portrait 1080p one. That's just at the desktop, but 2 or 3% utilization for what is quite a considerable amount of pixels isn't all that massive. But when you compare that to the amount of VRAM that it uses, about four gigabytes with uh, Plex open and playing videos, well, that's a lot more significant. So when you then think about something like this 1050 with only two gigabytes of VRAM total, well, that might be a bit of a problem. So let's have a test, starting with Watch Dogs Legion. Now, as is to be expected, the 3080 didn't even blink. There was no performance difference between running with a single 1080p monitor ultra settings and having a second monitor connected running the same, same test, same settings. Interestingly, Watch Dogs Legion actually tells you how much VRAM it used during the benchmark run, and it was just shy of 8GB of usage on ultra settings, which is well below the 10GB that the card has, so my theory here won't be proven or disproven by this card. Now the 1660 on the other hand, with its 6 gigabytes of VRAM, well, the performance playing at Ultra was pretty terrible and it's not something you would play at with this card, so I dropped it down to very high and there it was a bit more reasonable and more importantly, the VRAM usage was just slightly above its total capacity. The card has 6 gigs, and the game reckons that it used 6.5, meaning that it was using a bit of system memory as well. Interestingly though, there was no performance impact between running with a second screen connected or with just a single primary. And the 1050? Again, even on low settings, as that's basically the only preference that you'd have if you're playing that game, uh, yeah, it still technically ran ever so slightly better with two monitors than it did with one, which is, um, I would call within margin of error, the same as the 1660. Cyberpunk shows almost exactly one FPS better using a single monitor rather than dual across all cards, and the 1050 actually picks up multiple FPS in the 1% lows, although it's safe to say that even on low settings and low textures, running at just 20 FPS average, you wouldn't be having a great time with that. CSGO shows next to no difference, except for the 1050 with a 3 FPS advantage for using a single monitor rather than two, and an 8 FPS advantage in the 1% lows, although with how high those numbers are, that's not a significant improvement. Fortnite is back to as good as makes no difference, and finally in Microsoft Flight the 1050 shows a decent 5 FPS average improvement running just a single monitor. So it's hardly killing your performance having a second screen connected, even on a lower end card like this. But that's with the monitor just sitting idle in Windows doing nothing. What if you were, say, watching a video or playing a film, something that would be active on the screen? Well, that could be a bit different, but since the 1050 was the only card to show any performance difference that was remotely measurable, I'll focus on using this one for the rest of these tests. In Watch Dogs, playing the video dropped the average down to 27 FPS, down from a best, a 29. That's 
still not drastic. In Cyberpunk, it's the same performance as if you weren't playing the video. CSGO is the same too, as is Fortnite. Only Microsoft Flight shows a difference, and it got better. I, I, I cannot even begin to explain why. So even playing a video isn't gonna ruin your experience, so what will? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but since Essentialist from our Discord, uh, who's a lovely money man by the way, feel free to join with that YouTube join button, uh, suggested that I, I test this in the first place as his system is having this issue with his 1052 gig, well, he suggested that I try triple monitors. So, sod it, why not? So, in Watch Dogs, <laughs> oh god, I give up. Um, it is the best result that I've had. It's the same best average, but the 1% lows actually improve by 1 FPS here. I, 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 how is, is my only response. I have no idea, but it was a repeatable result. Now, Cyberpunk does show more sanity by just not caring, although CSGO finally shows an actual performance decrease by using multiple monitors. Full, a full 10 FPS, no less. That's relatively significant. Unfortunately, that significant drop comes from a bit of a bug in where when I press the F9 key to start my benchmark, the whole system hangs for about a second. It was worse with triple displays. It was slightly better with uh, dual and then was basically non-existent with single, but once you remove that initial latency or that, that initial system hang, the performance delta gets a lot smaller. That's shown again in Fortnite where it really doesn't care how many monitors you have. Although in Microsoft Flight, it does revert to almost the worst performance that I've seen with this card, at 18 FPS average and 11 FPS in the 1% lows. So does running multiple monitors kill your gaming performance? Well, on the whole, at least from my testing, the answer is no. It really doesn't. There may be some very specific use cases where you have a lower end card, especially one with less VRAM, maybe you have a one gig card instead, or two gig but you're running slightly higher settings or something like that. There may be a case where having multiple displays can hurt your performance, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna be worrying about with my, my fancy setup, and I'm not sure that it's something that you should really worry about for yours either. Of course, your results may vary. Your system and setup may be different or unique to, to mine in that it does create an issue for you. And if you are suspecting some performance issues, then sure, try disconnecting your extra displays, running a benchmark and seeing if there's a difference. But from my testing, there doesn't seem to be quite as big of a deal. Now you've heard the benchmarks and my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of these results? Do you have a performance issue that you've noticed with multiple monitors? And if you have, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. I'd like to understand a bit more about what potentially could cause these problems and what uh, specs you have. Also, just your general thoughts on the video and that sort of thing. If you've got any suggestions for things that you want me to test in the future, feel free to leave those down there too. And as always, there are plenty of ways that you can both stay up to date with these videos, including hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. There's also great ways to support the channel too. There's the new YouTube join button that you can check out down there for access to our Money Min Discord chat, where we discuss these sorts of things, get sneak peeks and all that jazz and get sponsor-free videos as well. There's also Patreon if you prefer to pay there and get access to our Disc uh, Money Men Discord chat that way. There's also links to uh, merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one. This is my At The Wheel channel, my car channel, which you can check out on the end cards when that pops up too. Uh, or there are more tech-related designs like the GPU T and the, uh, the Particles one. I do quite like that one. There's also a load of other links you can check out for Amazon, Overclock, GK Affiliate links, VPN options, Humble Bundle, and Streamlabs OBS, a load of stuff, so feel free to check it out. There will be some more videos on the end cards if you want to check those out too. And otherwise, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.